Hi, welcome everybody to TWR Facebook Live. Um, so I'm very happy here today. We will start this morning uh, with the short meditation. Uh, remaining in silence and uh, feeling the connection to the silence, being aware of the silence being aware of the presence of all the qualities in the silence, such as comfort, warmth, completeness, confidence, and uh, allowing the experiences from that silence and whatever experiences and qualities that we all need in this moment in our life to evolve or to overcome to evolve and to find and to grow. So please join me with the uh, meditation here, with the meditation of silence, uh, connecting with the Salewe Mantra. Thank you. 
Just continuously remain in the silence. Be aware of the silence. Feel the fullness in the silence. Be aware of the unbounded space in that silence. Through this awareness of the boundless silence, be aware that we are all connected this moment. The cyber sangha are connected through this sacred silence. We share the same sacred space. We are aware of the same sacred space. We are all connected to one boundless sacred silence. We are all aware of that one single sphere of light. And allow the whatever experiences, qualities, that which will clear you enlighten you, show you, guide you, give you the strength from this collective boundless sacred space. Allow that for a moment because we all are helping each other, supporting each other. Feel that power of connection and support. Okay, now you can open your eyes. So how's, how's everybody? How everybody's doing? How is the meditation? It's a nice group of people showed up this morning, so I'm very happy. And we have a, our host Mariela is ready to help you, help you all. Some whatever is needed this moment here. Thank you, Mariela. And so, so I was uh, down in New Mexico uh, last week, and, and I was teaching on Twenty One Nails, which is uh, coming from this book. Uh, called Shangju Nienju. Uh, I've been teaching for the last couple of years there. So it's 21 nails, but every year we cover like a few of them. So last time we cover cover a few of them. So one one important part, one nail was the nail, nail 11th. 
Uh, so basically, in the 11th, it's about clearing the darkness. And this is Kundusangbo Ranrik Mimpasela Chansalo. So basically, paying homage to Samantha Bhadra, the old goodness um, Buddha, that which clears the darkness. And so, so that basically, of course, um, it's referring to uh, outer uh, sense of Samantha Bada that we can project on, we can connect to, we can learn from, or primarily what really it's trying to uh, teach us is to, to realize the Buddha within, or Christ within, whatever divine name you wanted to call it, within, or nameless divine within, that to connect with that within ourselves, so the old goodness, Kundu Zangpo, the old goodness, it's within ourselves. So obviously, probably some of us feeling a little closer to these experiences of goodness within us, and some of us may be feeling a little bit lost to feeling connection to that goodness within us. Some are probably feeling not good at all, feeling very down, depressed, lost, but the goodness is still there, like in the moment of bad weather, when it's a stormy, windy, dark, wet, cold, but this clear sky, it's still there, regardless of your individual location, personality, not having access to it, or does not matter, clear sky is always still there. The luminous sun is always shining its warmth every direction without any bias is shining there. It's a matter of time that you will have access to it. So that light is always there, regardless of personal personality or person individuality or ego or pain identity interferes to access to that light. But that's what it is right now, this very moment for all of us, it's there for sure. With no doubt, it's there. And so these practices of like a Salivu Mantra, practices of silence or stillness, these are beautiful practices that truly help us, give us more access to it than trying to keeping more busy in terms of the activities or more busy in terms of the voices and speeches and thoughts and emotions. So, so definitely the light is still clearly there. And, and this, this is probably one of the most important, I think, uh, as of course it's the most important volume for me as a practitioner, but uh, I think probably on this earth, face of this earth, this is one of the most important a sacred teaching. Uh, it's a called Shang Yun Yinju Kaju Korji. And among that, there are many uh, chapters that among that is called, which is called 21 Nails. And, and which is, I just wanted to just kind of mention this. This is not particularly teaching on Shang Yun Yinju or teaching on specific um, parts of Shang Yun Yinju. This is all more like a little bit giving some sense of a taste what is there, uh, uh, how we might understand these teachings a little bit closer, and also trying to bring some sense of, you know, um, trying to make it a little bit more accessible as much as possible, my ability to do, do that. So that's what my intention to do that, to make it a little bit more accessible. So first of all, like uh, on this 11th nail, when it's talking about, you know, the four uh, lambs, I just, which we are going to uh, do, uh, it's a sequence, four lambs, so this today is the first one, so, but I wanted to at least mention this. Um, so it says the lamp of the eye, so basically the, our eye organ, and um, uh, this being a door, so uh, of course, you know, in, um, the many tradition, I think I is the door of the soul. Uh, in a way, 
Uh, I is clearly a door, door of your pure awareness, pure consciousness, your heart, your uh, soul, your potentiality, your highest aspect of yourself. The eyes is the door um, to that. And particularly this teachings from uniques. I think some sense this is a unique than many other teachings describes that way that probably sometime, for example, uh, in some traditions, the shunyata is not, it's clearly it's not the door, door of eye consciousness, eye senses, maybe even eye has nothing to do with it. Shunyata is more, it's um, the inferential cognition uh, uh, through logic you understand, through experiences you fully realize it, but I it's not clearly said anything about I being the door of this truth. So that's what, what this is a unique, every unique has its own uh, beauty and quality. And this is all what we are trying to do is uh, trying to grab, trying to have some hold of, trying to have some experience and understanding of that uniqueness of this text. And so, so I clearly a door of, of the inner world inner uh, pure self, inner experiences. And I is also our door that we create whole reality, a whole world. So probably over 90% of the information that receive from outside, uh, I'm not sure the numbers are correct or not, but I heard that the big percentage of the information that we receive outside is through our eye senses. And uh, of course I post it, um, uh, on my Facebook page at the beautiful video called Human Eyes. So how basically I is uh, perceiving uh, outer light uh, through lenses and through retina and uh, into a brain and how it processes in a brain and projects back into the world. So somehow uh, in a way that I is clearly a doorway of the light that we receive from outside to inward. So basically outside, maybe there is not, there is only light and waves and energies there and which we all receive so much through our eyes. Uh, we don't, nothing is there that what we see, but what we're seeing is we, we have projected out. So in a way, there's more equal or more information going out than going in. So what is coming in is pure light. So what is going out is pure projection. So it's, it's not so much different from like uh, a, a video, uh, when you project the video or when you project the slides, for example. So when we show the slide, for example, what is there is there is a dark room and uh, which allows to see the light better. There, there is a a pure, a clean white screen, but hopefully it's clean than having dots and wrinkles, so which doesn't allow us to see clearly. And then you have a projection, a projector, projector which has the electricity, light, uh, has a, a light inside which uh, which turns on. So you you put this light in between the light and lenses, so. Backside, there's only light. There's only energy and the light, which there's nothing more. And uh, in the front side, there's only lens. There's nothing more. And and in the in the in the screen, there's only projection, nothing more. But what you're really seeing, experiences, is everything. It's in that slide or in that film, that which is uh, which all with all of them are a pieces of slides or pieces of uh, pics. Uh, uh, pieces of uh, images, um, and when you tr when you look closer and closer and deeper and deeper, these there is no even images. There is only a pixels of light. So so in a way, even in the slide itself, there is nothing more than pixels of light. And when it's projected out, but the way pixels are formed is the form as an image which has a a story which has an emotion connected with it, which has a, um, ideas related to it, a forms related to it. We project it out on the screen. Then what we see, what we see is what is inside. So in a way, whatever you are seeing through your eye right now, for example, I guess you are looking at the, your screen. 
right? Right now, you all are looking at your computer screen and you're on your iPhone. Even I'm looking at my, <laughs> I'm looking at the, my iPhone screen. So in a way, clearly what you're seeing is you're not seeing me. You are seeing a light. You are seeing, you have, you have, you have, I say, you have defined, you have processes, you have uh, made a meaning out of it, you have, brain has figured out what to call it, what to say it, what it means it, what I can learn from it. It has created a whole thing from these, what are you seeing right moment. And what you're really seeing is nothing more than simply a light. So basically what I'm trying to say here is in these ancient traditions, this is, I mean, neuroscience today, they sometimes seems like a claiming to discover a lot of things. And I think many of these things, it's truly nothing more new. These are already described thousands of years ago. In a way, far better than some of the ways people are describing today. But what what's, what is the beauty of science is, I love science, I love to, I don't understand everything, but I love to watch them, look them, read them, try and understand them, talk with people. What it, what it is, it just somehow, they complement each other, deeply complement each other. And that is the strength for both science, I think, hopefully that's how people scientists see to, to able to refer back to these ancient wisdom tradition this is a beauty and for these ancient beauty and ancient wisdom tradition able to uh, uh, see through the scientist's eye without losing its sacredness its a deeper purpose and a higher purpose not trying to uh, trying to make it too matter and material and 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 I don't know what else, like kind of diluting down that keeping its highest, higher purpose and higher understanding, I think that's the strength of scientists too. So I think there is this sense of beauty, they're complementing each other. So anyway, trying to make it short is that I is the door of our consciousness. I is the door to yourself to your higher self. The I is the door to your infinite potentiality. So I is that. So in a way, I just uh, post this morning, um, our little puppy, it's no longer really a puppy, but uh, it's still a puppy for me. It's Demchung, he's called Demchung. And uh, so yesterday I was uh, kind of enjoying his uh, company and, and always I amaze, amazed by when he look, look at you through your eyes and often people tell that, you know, like the animals don't look at closely through each other's eyes, but usually they feel a little bit more threat unless it's a food. But I don't feel exactly like that. It, it, it feels like he's really, there's something deep, a sense of love, a deep a sense of a caring connection, a deep sense of a light there in animal's eye. And like, like, so I felt that I took a little closer photo and shared my the light coming through my uh, demchung. So I hope you all enjoy that that light. So. Second part is second part is called Langtong Nang Vidoma. Langtong Nang Vidoma is is the light, uh, is uh, light that uh, coming through appearances, uh, the appearance the appearance light. So basically, um, so basically what I, I guess what is saying here is Langtong Nang Vidoma is all the appearance that what you see. Um, what you perceive through your senses, particularly through your eye, it's purely light, access to light, access to your higher consciousness, access to yourself, only if you're able to remain clear, empty, luminous, boundless, only if you're able to remain that, you access that 
a light of appearances through higher awareness. I don't know if it's making any sense what I'm saying here, but okay, so, so basically, I think I said clear enough. So if you don't understand it, maybe look at it again. So all the appearance, what you see in life, you're seeing mountains, you're seeing river, you're seeing nature, you're seeing people. I look at my dog, my family, my wife, my son. You see these appearances, but you have a chance to see a light also through these appearances if only if you are st you stay clear with your pain conflict uh, ego uh, expectations judgmental mind if you only you stay clear with these then you will see they become at the door to the light too your husband can become a door to the light your wife can become door to the light your loved ones, every single loved ones can become door to the light. Your neighbors can become door to the light. Your, your pets can become door to the light. The nature can become door to the light. Every single thing what you perceive through your any senses, particularly eye sense, can become door to the light. So I think that's what really more what is saying in the second, second, second lamp. Third one, it says, Rangri Ishidoma. So Rangri Ishidoma is, is the, the lamp or the light of self-awareness, the light of self-awareness. Basically, what, one of the reasons why it's, it's called light, why it's called lamp, is because it clears the darkness. Clearly, if you are blind, you will not see the light you will not able to uh, process this light through your, through your retina and in your brain in these colorful experiences. You will not able to do that. Because I clearly clears the darkness of environment. Right now, since your eye is open, you don't see the darkness out there because this, it clears. You see the light. Uh, hopefully you see the light. And then, so second one is, it's also a light because the appearances, what you see, like a depression, you, 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 let's look at the eye from the eye of depressions, depression, person, depressed person. Probably sees very heavy, dull, uh, stuck, uh, uh, lack of light, lack of vitality, lack of energy, uh, sense of lost. Um, yeah, so basically just imagine a deep sense of depressions through the eye of depressions. Uh, and many times I think our appearances cause depression rather than uh, awakens you, uh, rather than illuminates you because, because you cannot see what it is. You're only seeing through your eye of your pains, eye of your fears, eye of your ego, a limited identity sense of I, which doesn't exist, but you have created over the years and your, your lenses are only through that eye, which allows, which does not allow us to see the, the insight, the inner awareness, through inner awareness, so you don't see the light in the appearances because what you see, you're seeing only darkness. So that's what the Lang Tong Lang Vidoma, what he's talking about. The, the third one is a similar when is a, so let's talk about this. The idea of, you know, as, I mean, as every scientist now uh, in the, you know, quantum theories and now neuroscience and uh, just, discovering and saying that nothing nothing is out there it's all things lights are reflected back through your eye in you process in the brain projected out your conditions and what you're experiencing is your aspect of yourself basically so that's 
let's say that um, let's say that of course this is what been saying for thousands of years this is exactly what is said but it's more defining scientific terms and it's it's it seems like a, it's a, a complementing and a, a nice way of understanding or probably many people trust more science than these ancient traditions and so so it's there's a benefit of it so what i'm trying to say here is the the if the what you're seeing out there is nothing there it's only light that means very simple that means what the way you ex most important not very simple it's very simple and most important thing that one of you need to understand the way you see yourself this moment it's not there it's not there it's also same process in the brain the as the perception of self has been created through conditions. There's not there's there's nothing there. So so this sense of I that you have created it's nothing there. But of course obviously this we all have our individual a sense of self, individual experiences of self, individual feeling conditions of self limitations of self, boundaries of self, uh, emotions of self, uh, ideas, limited ideas of self, a pain of self, and feeling blockages of self, feeling dislocated, displayed in, in self, in the wrong time, wrong space, wrong body, wrong everything. We can go so far away where, where we experience this self in us. But truth is, as outer world is a projection, the process is through your brain and it's nothing else there, it's the same thing, you're not there. So does it mean it's like a nihilist? Denial? No. Not absolutely not. So what is their sense of self is this simply a pure boundless space and awareness of that space. And that awareness of self is the infinite possibility that you can be who you can be and what you can see and what you can feel and what you can create and what you can bring in in life in the world so obviously the bigger question is that how we actually really practically to access that approach that realize that able to live a little taste of that in our life that is of course it's a very very important question this is what uh, personally i'm one one way i'm sitting in a starbucks and looking at these books and and um Coming down, unbroken lineage, thousands of traditions, beautiful, beautiful. Feel very blessed, feel very, very lucky, fortunate. Cannot even just sometimes, goosebumps, cannot, you know, feel like so fortunate to having access to these, these sacred teachings, but also at the living in this incredible moment of technology, it's a time of technology, it's science. It's amazing, you know, like w how lucky we are able to learn from the modernization and science and sciences and discoveries and looking back in this ancient tradition, we're very, very fortunate and lucky. So, so basically this sense of, so a sense of self that we are projected, it's no longer, it's not also there. So basically what I'm trying to say here, so for, for that reason, when we say is wrong, we should do my So, so in the lamp of innate awareness, it clears the darkness of our mind, our self, our inner darkness can be cleared by the light of innate awareness, the self awareness. Rangri ishe, the wisdom of self awareness can clear the inner darkness. So now the question is for each individual, for each one of you is, what is that 
you know, theoretically, what is it make any sense? Conceptually, does it make any sense? And um, personally, does it make any sense? Experientially, does it make any sense? Are you interested in experiencing this in your in you in your life and trying to bring some changes in the real places what we call real places in our life or most importantly these shift of awareness and particularly the collective shift of awareness can bring in a bigger social changes in the world that is i think the most important question we should always ask and we should always work forward work toward that a greater social um, change as as we have little changes that we experience within ourselves, uh, individual shifts into a, a more collective place and then boundless place. So last one, I know today is we are supposed to talk about the first one. It seems like we're taking a whole time talking about kind of going through a little bit about each of them. So anyway, I'm not going to worry about, I have no obligation to finish anything or end anything so I can, uh, I can do whatever I wanted to do here on my, in front of my face, my phone, right? So I hope you are all okay with that. So, so the last one is called Kunji Yingji Doma, Kunji Yingji Doma Yi, Chongzi Loi Mimbasel. So the lamp of the spacious base of all. So lamp of the base of all, which is the boundless space. Kunji ying jidoma, kunji ying, kunji ying. This, the boundless space, which is the base of all. So lamp of that means the awareness of that. So awareness of, anyway, so this is the very traditional kind of wording system. But in the, I think in the simply what it means, the awareness of boundless base of all. So, or maybe simpler way, is the awareness of boundless space. Awareness of boundless space. Awareness of boundless space in you. That means you are not identifying, you don't have a sense of I in a, any particular way that you are stuck in. Your sense of I Maybe it only exists in that moment in reflection, in response to some outer circumstances, but it's not identifying within or, or from that ego. So, so some sense of the sense of perception of self is the boundless. So when the perception of sense of self is the boundless, you don't have issues with anybody. A wonderful experience, right? That would be... That will be really great experiences of feeling who you are. That you do not have conflict with anybody. That you do not have conflict. I wanted to repeat this beautiful line. I think you do not have a conflict with anybody. The conflict is the world that we live in. Even beautiful the ancient tradition, world religion, the major world religions, so much conflict in those religions. Within one religion, so much conflict. Within one school, so much conflict. Within one monastery, so much conflict. Where does all this conflict is coming from? A places where there are supposed to be less or none, let's not say none, but less, but there is enough there. But where is that conflict is coming from? Their conflict is coming from a bias, preference, divisions, separations, exclusions. And why is somebody need to do that? Because somebody does not have any clue about this beautiful, sacred, boundless base of all. There is no maybe enough sense of awareness of that boundless space of base of all. Maybe there's not enough of that. 
Maybe there is a little bit of that. Maybe there is understanding of theory of that. Maybe there is a glimpse of experience of that, but not enough to change opinion and 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 the way one lives. So that the last lamp is very much, and it's, I think it's also kind of very interesting. Uh, okay, well, I, I heard a mark, bookmark there, now it's lost. Let it go into boundless space. <laughs> so w- what we're saying in the text is saying, Chongzin Tumti Mimbasel, like Chongzin Tumta means a bias um, doctrines, bias religion, uh, bias school, being bias. And this, you know, like idea of fundamentalist. My religion is the best. My theory is the best. Our practice is the best. Others are good. We need to be equal. We need to be same. We need to be this and that. Beautiful words, empty words. But it really truly comes down on a personal level. A personal level. And many, even big leaders... lose that moment and fell back into this sense of bias. And then in deep inside, there's still this sense of, yes, all are same, but this is better. So, so these are, these are four lamps, but these lamps are basically in a sense of what they are is a simply uh, awareness, awareness of that boundless space, the fourth one, awareness of a sense of self, the third one, how you say, uh, the awareness of sense of self, the, uh, the lamp of third one, and the awareness of appearances, lamp, the lamp or light of appearances, the second one, and awareness of the I appearance through the eye, the environment, the, the first lamp. So these are all the reason why they refer as a lamp. It's because simply awareness, the conscious, being conscious and con- being aware. And that is exactly what the light is about, what the lamp is about. So I want just wanted to... Um, say a few words here. In, in the Tibetan tradition, like uh, particularly when and there is some approach of explanation, I think very simple approach of these uh, Sutra, Tantra and Dzogchen uh, approaches. Uh, I'm not sure maybe this is the right place to discuss about it or not, but anyway, since this came out, I'll just complete it. So it's called Nangtong Yerme, Detong Yerme, Riktong Yerme. So, uh, inseparable state of appearances and emptiness in first one, inseparable state of bliss and, and emptiness, and inseparable state of awareness and emptiness. So, so inseparability is there in all three, but what inseparable? One piece is always there is the emptiness. The other piece is a different. One is appearances, one is bliss, one is awareness. So, so the, because of these, three different approaches, whole three different um, doctrine, approach, philosophical understanding, approaches of the practices, the experiences of practices, it becomes totally different. And so I think it, in a way, it, it says also in some sense, um, in my point of view, it does talk about some sense of these different um, how you access to these lights from different theoretical and practical and experiential point of view. So anyway, so I think that that's enough. One last thing uh, I wanted to say is because as we, just to conclude here is, as everything outside our world, which is nothing more than what we process in our brain is projected out into the light that we make a, whole our world, the reality, we create our reality, and each of one of us have a different world that we created, different world that we live in, different world that we're experiencing. 
and they are very different from each other. And so same way that not only world what we created, the creator of that world, which is also within us, I think that does not exist either equally as the world itself would be projected out. The creator does not exist. That I think probably in some way more important to recognize that than always objectively analyzing and trying to see something is not there, but subjective one who is analyzing it seems it's smart. The ego, smart ego is always there and it's, it's like a, it sees the universe, analyzes universe, the judges the universe, the fixes the universe, labels the universe and categorize the label, uh, universe. And But someone is there, of course, not someone is there, there is inner intelligence which is non-biased, unbounded, but the ones who is labeling, categorizing, this is the source of problem. So so world that you are living right now, my uh, end remarks here is, the world that you are living right now, if you are not happy, you don't have to live one more single day. You have an opportunity to change. That is what I, my message today. The world that you are living right now, if you are not happy, you don't have to live one more another day in that world you have ability to change if you if you connect more to the inner light if you connect to, uh, if you see more through the inner light if you create more the world through that inner light the environment inner light better world for our light through those light you do not have to live one more day in that world that you are suffering and you don't have to spend one more day in those suffering that you are experiencing right now because they, they don't exist. It's you have projected, you have created them equally as the outer world. So um, so I think um, it's almost 11 here. So I think uh, there are a few more things that I have prepared this morning, but I think I'm not gonna take more time. And I think I will kind of uh, catch up next week Oh, I don't remember now the when when was when is the next uh, next schedule of Facebook Live and but uh, Mariella will be posting right now here when will be the next next our Facebook Live and just before I forget one one last thing I wanted to let everybody know uh, we have sent out um, a survey and that we really need that from all of you. And uh, this survey is very much, we're trying, to, we're trying to understand how we can help you all more and better and more efficient way, how we can help you all. And uh, your feedback is how you, we can help you, what you like, what you don't like, what need to be changed are very, very important for us. Your opinion is very important for us. So please don't think that, oh, one person is just me, why my opinion matters. No, your opinions matters a lot to us. So I hope that after this Facebook Live today, you will look into this link that maybe Mariela is sending or in, um, or maybe, oh yeah, the link will be already there on my Facebook page or, or if it's a Lingmicha International Sangha in your own different web pages on Facebook pages, there will be link. I think I know as there is about 12 languages already there uh, this uh, survey. Uh, please do fill them and send them as soon as possible and that will help us a lot, okay? So thank you very much everybody, all my love, blessings to all of you. So let's stay connected uh, th through this Facebook Live and uh, until next length and uh, all best wishes. Thank you.